unemployment rate for veterans who served on active duty in the military at any time since September 2001 stands at 9%. That's according to a recent report by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And the Springfield, Connecticut metropolitan area is about two thirds down on that list. Well, joining me to talk about the importance of helping returning veterans is Sergeant Gomez, Executive Director for the Bilingual Veterans Outreach Center of Mass Inc. and Charles Demersian, Veteran Employment Coordinator with Red Cross. Thank you, gentlemen, both so much for joining me today to talk about this. this is a very important topic and there's so much here to talk about like we were talking about off camera. I'm gonna start with you, Sergeant Gomez. You've been with the Bilingual Veterans Outreach Center for 28 years, you said? Well, before that, I'll thank you for having us. It's just a, a pleasure being here and, and trying to explain uh, the rationales of what's happening out there in this world. I, I have been with the Bilingual Veterans Outreach Center uh, since uh, August 17, 1987. Uh, that's a year after I retired from military services, came to the Valley, and I started seeing that services, especially for the Hispanic veterans, was very poor uh, because of the language and the cultural. Uh, so something clicked in my mind, hey, why don't you put an outreach center uh, together? And I got together with other veterans uh, from Vietnam, as I am a Vietnam combat veteran, and we put this little monster together, which has been in place uh, for all this time, uh, to the point right now that we're fixing to construct a 30 apartment unit mm -hmm. at a cost of $3 million for homeless veterans. So we have done some growing. But over, uh, over the years, one of the biggest problems that I have noticed is jobs. If an individual ain't got a job, he has nothing. He become homeless, he goes into the alcohol, he goes into the drug, he goes into everything because the job is not there. By looking at this, I, I, I looked at myself, I said, well, what about you when you got out? Well, after 20 years of service, I got out and said, well, I'm gonna get a military pension and I don't have to work no more. Well, that lasted about a month. After a month, I said, well, I'm not gonna make it on the pension. I need to find a job. And I noticed that I, I was not the individual that I was dealing with in the outside. They were different people. They were not like myself. Well, it's different, I'm sure, too. And Charles, you might be able to um, join in the conversation now and be able to discuss when somebody's in the military, they have, they learn different experiences, they experience different things, and so when they come into the civilian world, it must be hard kind of putting that on their resume and really being able to market themselves to an employer. Do you see that? Absolutely. What uh, what it turns out is that, you know, depending on when they, in, when they go in and how long they're in the service, um, it's like time stops because everything is structured in, in the military. Um, but in the civilian world, it's always evolving and, and changing. So when the him or her, the veteran that leaves uh, their obligated service, what ends up happening is um, they tend to be behind the eight ball, so to speak, as far as um, how to set up a resume and just basically how to communicate. It's like a different language when they, when they return into the civilian world. And that can lead to very bad negative consequences with, like you said, if you don't have a job, you have nothing, and it can spiral to homelessness, drug addiction. That, that, it starts right there. It, it starts when that individual goes into the military. We send these kids, kids because I could be their grandfather right now to many of them, and they go and face the world. They face danger, they face other people. They learn so many things, and 24-7, they're told what to do and they know exactly what to do. They get out and sergeant is not there no more to tell them what to do. Now, where am I? What am I going to do? Who's going to tell me? And they commence to lose that motivation that they brought from services because that motivation is no longer there. Nobody to motivate them or them to motivate themselves. And that's when the problems begin. That's why the job that we want to do with them is so important. We have many organizations and agencies out there trying to put 
veterans to work. And there's jobs out there. But you just cannot take an individual and say, here's a job, go for it. Now, you were telling me that you get statistics from the Bureau of Labor Statistics as well. And unemployed veterans, it's, it's a pretty big problem out here in the Pioneer Valley in Western Mass. Absolutely. Um, it's, well, with the economy, you know, all across the board, it's, it's, it's pretty bad. Um, and our job is to just try to um, translate their experiences in the service to a civilian, um, you know, aspect. So in a way, we kind of approach it like a coach would with their team. You know, you practice, you practice uh, interview processing, you practice uh, resumes, and you kind of customize um, their resumes to um, not only the job that they're interested in, but you try to um, you know, set it up as far as uh, being compatible to the company that they might be interested in. What's been a transformation that you've seen from a veteran facing unemployment to finding a job? Well, what's difficult is the majority of the candidates are, have, you know, some have advanced degrees and they're still trying to, you know, find a, a position or even change their, um, basically what their career was to, you know, change to a different career. Um, just trying to translate their experiences in the service um, to associate with um, corporate, managerial, um, just executive level um, positions. Now, Sergeant Gomez, you've been doing this for 27, 28 years, and like you said, you're a Vietnam veteran, and then you have a younger generation of veterans coming now, too, from the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. Talk about the affinity group, how this has kind of evolved into, and the work that you've been doing with Charles with the affinity group. Here, where the row meets the tire, or the tire meets the row, whatever, that was the piece that I was talking about, about sending an individual to a job without yet knowing if that individual is ready for a job. We might look all right the way we look from the outside. We might not be all right inside of us. If you look at me right now, you say, oh, Sergeant Gomez looks all right. But you don't know that Sergeant Gomez is 70% PTSD from the war in Vietnam. And that's what's happened to many of these kids. We have to sit them down. We have to work that portion that Charles' work and the paperwork, the letters. Then we have to find out where he's at. There's where the bilingual veterans are resent their place to row because I got the case managers. They can work with these individuals and do their claims. Not every veteran is ready to go to work. Now, the affinity group with the 11 members we are going to be hosting workshops. Workshops beginning to from what is it that they need first because we're going to do a survey right now. We got about 40 veterans in the pipeline that we're going to be surveying them for them to tell us what that I need. Where do I see myself? Then we can break that down after we study that survey and then set up the workshops where we're going to prepare. Now the other piece is that we're going to try to meet with the employers, members from the affinity group, and find out what is it that that employer wants or needs and what jobs he's got opening. And we match up those veterans with those jobs, ensuring that he is ready to go to work. An individual's got high PTSD, TBI, traumatic brain injury, or other disabilities, might not be able to do the job that he wants to do. That's where we come into play as a guy. Let's talk this over. So it seems as if you guys are focusing on the inside, not just the outside, and helping resumes or find jobs or fairs or workshops, et cetera. And now I know you guys just placed about 19 or 20 veterans. Talk about the work that you guys have done with them. Okay. Um, being in the Pioneer Valley, you know, it's a, like I was saying before, it's a different animal from all the other states. So um, when we first um, launched the, the program, it, it was kind of difficult because um, uh, Massachusetts, the Empire, Pioneer Valley are um, 
very protective over their, their veterans and they don't want them to be used or abused by any you know, outside entities, corporations or whatever. So I was sitting there trying to figure out, you know, they say, well, we got all of these organizations that are doing the same things that you're telling us that we're gonna do. So I'm like, how can I complement these organizations? Um, how can I, what haven't they, you know, figured out? Um, to you know, provide you know additional services, and part of that, um, with the help of Sergeant Gomez, he, he, it made me start thinking about, all right, let's focus on, you know, up to that point, you know, having the reconnection workshops and the arc transitional leadership programs to train them, um, just like you would, you know, practice anywhere, you know, football, baseball, band. Um, we do, you know, as far as the, the mock interviews and we prepare them, we build portfolios for some. Um, and we just try to uh, train them. If they have their eye on a certain position or a certain company, we do the profiles for that company and then we um, give it to them, uh, to each candidate and then we just, um, go through a process uh, and, and you know it's hand carrying you know you walk them through um, where they can um, be aware of what's happening and uh, and or the changes in the civilian world and it was this process that allowed almost two dozen veterans to get placed now speaking about the future hopefully an initiative boots to business will be able to kind of kind of where the rubber meets the road, it'll kind of help put everything into place if the MGM casino comes through, correct? Oh, um, yes, either, um, what we've created here is it's, it's something that um, has long been, you know, needed as far as, you know, the additional to, to help. So um, what we are figuring is that, you know, we can work together with all the VSOs, all of the other veterans organizations and what we can't cover, they can cover. It can, um, with the affinity group, for, for example, they can um, actually be the, um, the oracle, so to speak, as far as um, um, being a one-stop shop saying, you know, a veteran comes in and say, oh, well, I need this. So the affinity group and each individual, each member is an expert in their own right in particular fields. Oh. No, it's okay. No, I'm sorry. But no matter what, going forward, the affinity group with the Bilingual Veterans Outreach Center, it seems as if it will be providing a lot more help and um, tools necessary for an unemployed veteran to be able to kind of get back up on his feet. Would you Definitely. Say? The affinity group is here to stay. As a matter of fact, we're going to be uh, doing a press release next Thursday, not this Thursday, but the following Thursday, and letting the, the community know about this group coming uh, or being in town already. We have already met with the big honcho in Nevada of the Red Cross, and uh, we are, and they blessed the affinity group. They love what we have been doing. Uh, we have a website, which is massachusettsaffinitygroup.org, uh, in place. And we're fixing sooner, I hope, than later to meet with individuals of NGM in preparing these veterans that do want to work for NGM, want to do the labor, want to do whatever. If when MGM comes to town, we are ready will have a group of individuals that we can present to them for hiring. Like I told you before, not everybody who want to work in MGM, but there's a lot of jobs that are going to be opening up and they have promised this community that they're going to hire a percentage of veterans. And we want to make sure that we keep them true to their word. But no matter what, whether the casino comes to town or not, we're glad that there are some organizations here in Western Mass that are helping our unemployed veterans. So thank you so much, Sergeant Gomez and Charles Demergian. Thank yes, you for your time. Thank you.